And I think, yeah, I think we do, we do have his description. Can we take that? Let's take his description. Okay. Yar, I wasn't sure if I'm going to be the captain straight away or not, but it oh. seems to be that uh, the old salty sea bass Christian Basil himself has decided to switch it up a bit and let me be your host this evening on Talk Like a Pirate Day, which, as you might be able to discern, I'm not going to be able to hold that that accent all the way through <laughs> but i am dressed like a pirate so we are going to try our damnedest i will be uh, drinking the rum to get the accent I'd be going drinking the, i'd be drinking the diet pepsi <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that just might like be our ancestors did with rum in it. But the, yeah, exactly. It may have actually might be a rum and coke. Anywho, so we are on Talk Like a Pirate Day. If you are watching this live on September nineteenth in the year of our Lord, uh, two thousand and twenty-three or fifteen twenty-three, whichever date it might be. Um, I again, I will be your host, Melanie Dean. Along with me, I have a few scallywags to go through with Talk Like a Pirate Day to see again how many of us can actually hold up the uh, the vernacular or trying an accent. Uh, first, let me go ahead and bring everybody up here. And when I say me, I'm hoping Christian's doing it because I really have my hands right here and can't do these buttons really well. <laughs> uh, Would you like everybody? Tiar. Would you yeah, like, it's like I'm going to put a like button everybody. in. There, there we go. go. So as you can see here, we have Christian Basil over Something here moved. in the middle card. Christian, how are you doing, you old salty sea bass? Oh, I'd be doing great. I've been trying to keep up with the accent, really, but I'm sounding like a leprechaun at some points. So, <laughs> honor me, the mayor. We are going oh, to be doing like a big finish CD audio that we've, uh, we haven't been doing big finish for quite some time. No. So, everybody, thank you for joining us tonight on this 
adventure as we go into Doctor Who and the pirates. And if I start so sounding like I uh, should be selling Lucky Charms, my apologies. I really suck at this pirate. <laughs> I keep trying to think to, to speak yeah. like Kevin McNally. Just keep trying to get Kevin McNally, friend of we the show. We should have brought him on. We should have. We, we have dropped yeah. the massive ball on that. Oh. Yeah. So if we can, if we can Failure. just channel him as Mr. Gibbs. And seeing if you can try to get going. I mean, I can again. The vernacular's there. The axe. I'm not. Oh, doing Nico, the permission at board. Come on, R. Permission yeah, to come on board. Come on, R. Everybody's typing R. in their R's. <laughs> yeah. The person who had left, but we'll come back to him, is David Chapman um, from the Rathole.ca. He has come hey. back with a drink now. He is now R. properly hey. uh, lubricated for this. Uh, <laughs> after, dude, just, after this, he's supposed to like a lubricated. <laughs> I, Hail I me like, this just doesn't Captain Jack as well. Tell but me about our, your shirt. Tell me, tell everybody here about your shirt. So there is a wonderful band, one of my favorite bands called Captain Tractor. Look them up. Um, they have they are Alberta born and raised and have been playing for more than 25 years. And one of their biggest hits is The Last Saskatchewan Pirate. Roger. Written by the Arrogant Worms. They made it famous. And apparently, just finally, after over 20 years, played it together on stage, despite both being Canadian bands. But this I got when I was, you know, 20 or so. Yeah. Tractor Jack. I, I assume you can see the back of that. I can't actually tell. Yes. No, yes. It's perfect. Yeah, you can see the it's label reflection in the glass there. But no, yes, Tractor Jack is the original uh, last Saskatchewan pirate of the song. And uh, so this is my, my talk like a pirate day. And, and, a, and I can just talk like a Canadian because, yeah, hosers. Oh, oh, right. so uh, I won't sad. be here very long. I do have to take off shortly after I give my blahs. But well, uh, after our interviews, we'll, oh, no. our, our, our introductions, I'll, I'll go to your rating first. Uh, next, uh, going around, we have a drunkard candy man, Mark Robinson. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, boy. How are you, you doing? Guys, all, uh, my guy... <laughs> My lady, the mistress of the seas. <laughs> <laughs> Wait until his vocabulary slurs. My I favorite thing about your patch, sir, is I think, I can't tell if it's blinged out or not. Or if it's just it shining. It is blinged. In. It is blinged. <laughs> oh, wow. I did take some of the sequence out for another idea, but it was completely steampunk. <laughs> ah, that's awesome. <laughs> so D steampunk by patch just for tonight. <laughs> Just for tonight, de you de <laughs> so then you'll get the glue out tonight or tomorrow. And <laughs> Re steampunk punk it back up. Punk it back so up. yeah, I'm good. I hope everyone's doing well. Happy International Pirates Talk Like Pirate Day. Talk like a pirate day. <laughs> talk like a pirate day. Next, I up, can't talk like pirate, but I will say shiver my timbers, you dirty sea dogs. There you go. <laughs> Right on. Next, uh, keep go keeping our little circle going around the, around the bend. We have the Reverend. There's no R's going on here. I'm a gone. Hydra Queen and Melee. Oh, I like Queen that. Melee. I, there you go. I like that, Andrew. What's with all these people talking like pirates today? <laughs> Shut up, Billy. Oh, oh look him. at that. Nicolette you. says you have higher allegiance. Hi. It's a fine thing, too. Thank you, Nico. Yes, so Tom, I am a pirate. Two so you have your margarita. Too late. You have your margaritaville cup. You're ready. You're ready to at least you have a little rum in there. You're ready to talk like a pirate today and a review. Uh, I just sing like Jimmy Buffett because he was a pirate. So that's very simple. That's very true. Easy. We just recently yeah. lost uh, Jimmy Buffett. Oh, so two shows in a row, I can get away with doing a Jimmy Buffett shtick. Absolutely. And then last but certainly certainly not least, we have the, I guess we could say, creative poobah behind Cosmic Mask. It it's better. Nick Smith. I am a poobah. I had to do this episode because I am originally from Bristol, England, where we all talk like pirates before they beat it out of me at school and got me to talk proper. <laughs> um, so this is Gert Lush. I can't imagine how much better it could be than uh, <laughs> doing this pirate thing. Well, even I think even in this particular uh, big finish, they do make that that quick uh, note of that's where the accent that we know and love of being a pirate, it came from that uh, the actor who played what was it Blackbeard himself in uh, the the the, the oh 
my brain's not working. But the first time we've ever heard Pirates was it was based from, I think, the actor who was from Bristol and that he and his um, research finding out like uh, that a lot of pirates did come from the area and they became, you know, decided I don't want to join the Navy. I'm going to go become a pirate or a privateer. So he kind of just grabbed that accent and really pushed it in and made it a little uh, more salty and scallywaggy and just didn't want any type of properisms in it. Um, but yeah, That's but we're right, not talking Bobby. about that. <laughs> we're going to... Hmm? Who's That's that? right, me, Bobby. You got it right. Yay! Yay! Oh, Candyman is two sheets to the wind. I would say four <laughs> sheets at this moment. <laughs> four <laughs> sheets to the wind. I actually read some of the uh, the dialogue of the uh, the pirates and what some of the stuff means. So I'd say three and three and three and a half. <laughs> so no, a a quick uh, a quick little deep cut for you. Uh, since a lot of people are saying pirate queen melee, I actually got my melee came from a gamer tag that I used a long time ago, and that's because I used to play the game secret curse and and every other version of monkey island and that was a pirate themed game and they lived on melee island and that's where i took melee became governor uh my gamer tag blah 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 blah. so it is very actually pirate themed um appropriately so let's get to talking about doctor who and the pirates this is an amazing bit uh, big fit a uh, big finish audio drama this one is a sixth doctor um Let's just go right to the, the, the rating since I know Dave can't uh, stay too long. But I, I do like how if you download this on the app, the title says and the pirates. It's Doctor Who and the Pirates. Or the last that lost or the sailor. Or the last that lost the sailor. sailor. So let's quickly start with. Uh, should I go ratings all the way around and then go low from high like Mr. Christian Basil likes to this do? This will be our show. You do it. Okay, I'm let's do that. But even Well, you know what? We're not going to do that because Mr. Tractor Jack over there has to go first. So right. let's go ahead and just get Tractor Jack's number, even though he's uh, uh, muted and saying weird words. You cut out your tongue, I was, was going to give it an 11 just so I go first. But in okay. reality, <laughs> I, I'm not. I, I would say I'm going to give it a 7. You need a seven. Okay, fair enough. Do you want me to just go on with my, my just thing Just go now? with your seven. All right. Your so seven. I'm I'm a musical theater guy. Period. Okay. So having this has a lot of Gilbert and Sullivan uh, pastiches going on. The cat is going crazy somewhere. Um, Get ready for the cat. Yes, if, where I'm saying there is a, a adorable Astrid the Adorable Corgi and Mew or is one of the many names that has not been settled on of the cat. We'll see. We'll may or may yeah. not see at some point. Anyhow, you can definitely Never hear. Never mind. We'll get you at Yeah, yeah exactly. We'll get you just because just we heard it. That. Yeah. There you go. Um, but I do love a, mu a good musical episode. Is this a good musical episode? It's certainly a, 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 an early one. You don't, There weren't a lot of musical episodes back in, I think it was 2003 that this came out. This, this, is, this is the 43rd entry of the main range. So it is very early in the... Uh, April 2003. Yeah, 2003. So yeah, it's this is yeah. all almost just just over uh, 20 years. So I mean, this is a great, almost a great time to watch it uh, mm -hmm. or listen to it, I guess. But yeah, no, it's it's. I don't like like e uh, Elin as an, as an as a as a companion terribly, mm -hmm. but I also mm -hmm. appreciated kind of what they tried to do with her telling a story. If you were to put this on TV. You would have her and Sally, who I like to retcon being Sally Sparrow, um, especially given the pirate reference. I, I, I'm having a conversation just kind of fade to, to the pirates. Mm -hmm. You know, and with that, that that very, oh yeah, this cam camera's set to long. So the camera did it with you and it looked <laughs> it was fantastic. Yes. I, I will get it, I'm going to do it again so I can look, I'm gonna keep my eye on it. There you go, it's just off to the thing. Uh, and yeah, okay. that, kind of pirate, that, that kind of movement though, right? The camera just goes off into the sea. That's kind of what I see. Um, I don't think it was the best of their shows, but again, it was very early. I love the Gil Gilbert and Sullivan. Um, Baker has a, a perfectly passable voice as far as singing. He's, he's, yeah, it, it's just, it's fun. It's so much, it's a fun show. It's a bit weird. It's a bit off the rails. And it's a, one of the few pirate episodes, quite frankly. <laughs> Because mm -hmm. there's only been really 
three of them, I think. Because there was the first Doctor, the 11th Doctor, that was kind of a follow-up, and then, of course, the more recent 13th special. So there's not a lot of, of pirate stuff, oddly enough, in Doctor Who. And if you don't count, like... The, the sea pirates. devils or... Yeah. Like, there's 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 some piratey of Jason stuff. You know, space pirates or sea monsters and whatnot. But there's not a lot of actual straight pirate stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Which, which and for, again, for the amount of historical stuff, that's extra strange. Sorry, I'm half watching the, the dog and cat are running around me. Around in front of me, and it's just it's kind of adorable. And if I, I will spin this camera around if they, if, they, if they get uh, into a. No, no, <laughs> All right, this is just, this is just, it's this is more entertaining than I am. Please, Sorry. Please hold while we uh, we're pausing. Exactly. <laughs> oh, the cat's there. Okay. Yeah, the cat's there. The cat is. I don't know where the cat's gone. All right. Well, that's okay. Pausing okay. audio. Pausing. It's. Imagine two animals joyfully oh, playing on a couch, and uh, it's adorable. Pretty sad, pretty sad. There we go. All right. So we're, we're now we're fading back, back, back over to, oh, to David. <laughs> I'm getting dizzy. I'm getting <laughs> seasick. Of course, now the cat we look moved. towards the cat his totally llama and, strewn. Like, failed a cat. Oh. <laughs> as soon as I turned the camera away, the cat went and failed a cat. That's what cats do. See, cat. Cats all the way over the other cushion. Cat's going to attack. Uh, this is terrible for a podcast. We may see murder. It really yeah. is. It this really is. is. Really terrible for a podcast. All right. Now we're looking at his I, liquor cabinet. I'm distracted. I'm and slightly distracted. Left 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 and Funko Pops. Where's all the rum gone? Yes. Where's all? Put Where's behind all the rum. rum. Apparently, I drank it. <laughs> just, yeah. Dogs upset, but no rum. Um. <laughs> so yeah, that's the. Uh, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> So a number the seven, of the house solid. Has come out to, uh, to to tell the dog to to hush up. So a solid seven for you. Yes, solid you seven. Highly That's recommend why. this. Uh, I I would. It it is something that you should experience. Do I actually feel... want to listen to it again. Now the, listening to it against all the other Colin Baker episodes, do you think this is one of his more strongest episodes? Our big finish of, of from what you've listened to, or strongest, would this be one no. that you kind of wait? Strongest, no. Most unique, yes. Okay. Um, and that and that's the big thing is it's not the two things are not necessarily the same, right? Mm -hmm. You can have a strong Correct. show, or you can have one that's not strong but still really, really good. Mm -hmm. And this is what that falls into. I agree. I absolutely agree on that. So. Uh, since we're gonna, I'm just gonna keep going around the bend and making making Christian go last, even though well next to last because I get to have the, the the privilege of I get to have that fine privilege of going last this time. Ah, I mean, I'm gonna be even worse. Keep putting off his microphone. But we can always just mute that part. <laughs> oh, um, okay. um, yes. the, the, the pirates on YouTube be doing the mutant part. Yeah, exactly. Hopefully not. Well, if that works, like I said, it, it does let us just mute the song. So we can just mute that one. It's not terribly exciting. But I it, it, it was worth the uh, the 10 seconds of fun. Oh, 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 oh. Mr. Ahead, Christian Basil, please. I have a query yes. for you. Yes. Should we go to commercial? I think we should be going to a commercial break. When we return, we'll be continuing our discussion of Doctor Who and the Pirates as we continue on soldiering up until the 60th no! anniversary. And what the hell was that? <laughs> okay. Sorry, that was not bad. on, tuned in, and become part of the legend. Back from a commercial break. We are a touring acoustic duo crashing kitchens around the country. We go from house to house every Friday night and we create music, we create food, a good time, we stream it live and we do it for free. So now we're just really kind of like trying to develop it and build a community group that people believe in, then they'll help us.
So we played from our rehearsal room. We played from the bathroom. Thankfully, that didn't catch on. I probably played guitar in my room, not for anyone, in front of anyone. Nobody heard for probably about 10 years. And then one Friday night, we played from the kitchen. It's the main place people want to be. It's where the food is. It's where the drink is. It's where the best lighting is. You can go to any party, and I guarantee you, the kitchen is going to be popping. Our ultimate goal I think would be to crash kitchens every Friday all around the world. Meet the doctor. I'm the doctor. But not the one you were expecting. All right, sexy. It's time to go home. Doctor Who Velocity, streaming now. Jake Collins has been launched into the stratosphere by the popular social media app, Ying Yang. I just think it's incredible that someone from our hometown we knew so well. That's my holy grail. You are the closest thing this town has to a hero. We're still just Jake. Oh, brilliant! It's hard to believe that in the 56 year history of the greatest sci-fi television show in the English language, there has never been a fan guide to Doctor Who. The official books might give you what they think you need to know, but only a guide written by a true fan will give you what you really want to know. Join Whovian, the brilliant Mackenzie Floor, as she takes you on an intensive journey inside the world of the first female Doctor. In the Binge Watcher's Guide to Doctor Who, Season 11. Right, let's get a shift on. Fellow Whovians, and welcome back to the Legend of the Traveling Harness. I don't even know what accent I'm doing anymore. <laughs> As today is Talk Like a Pirate Day here, September the 19th, we are talking like a pirate. Uh, as we review a special episode of the of uh, Doctor Who and the audio big finish, Doctor Who and the Pirates or the Last That Lost a Survivor, um, which uh, Stellar. Uh, Sorry, I can't, like he I wasn't can't, a survivor that got lost. Reading with the eye patch he was the antithesis of that. And the pirate is going on here. Lost the sailor. Uh, it starts the sixth doctor, Colin Baker, as uh, the sixth doctor, and uh, um, Evelyn Smythe. Uh, Ma Maggie Staples is Evelyn Smythe. And, and on the audio book. And we have a special guest mm. host. Wow. Melanie Dean will be taking charge of our vessel while we move our adventures. Uh, she for isn't. Our she really isn't, but she's going to try. try. As you can see, that uh, our day, our dear David, Dave Chapman. It looks like David for some reason uh, has departed. Uh, he's he's gone down to see Davy Davy Jones's locker. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I was. Uh, ah. Sorry, I'm sorry. I get, I get confused when I see rum bottles being shown to me. Anywho, the person who is now in his hot seat is also taking up the residence in his little spot. And that's the drunkard Candyman. Oh. So tell me, drunkard, <laughs> what do you rate this episode? And tell me a little bit more why you liked it, why you hated it, and uh, just everything about it. Right. I'm going to be the bad guy in this. Oh, no. <laughs> Here we I'm go. a drunken Candyman. I'm going to give it a free. Oh, Lord. shots fired right across the starboard bow. Holy I moly. I get landlubber. Explain yourself, you horn swap. Explain myself. <laughs> well, the <laughs> first episode was literally Sally just going, whatever. If you ever, the first episode is just like, whatever. Then it gets reasonably okay. You get into the story, find out what's going on. And then the third episode comes in. And I hate musicals. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. Oh, wait until you get the yeah. review. <laughs> Ooh, okay. Yes. Um, and but didn't even do a sea shanty. No. They had a little bit of the drunken sailor, just instrumental. Okay. They did. They did. I caught that too. It was a little instrumental. Dun, 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 and nothing. No. No other sea shanties. Disappointed. That just dropped down marks at all. Um, 
compared to Collins Baker's like other stories like Davros, which was really, really good. I actually enjoyed Davros. This one was just like, what am I doing? <laughs> Why am I listening to this? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll be a better if I was watching the Muppets Treasure Island. That's more yes. fun. Yeah, I will always agree with that. Muppet right. Muppet Show, Muppet Show right. Island is my, one of my favorite movies of all time. <laughs> um, <laughs> the only musicals I watch are probably Muppet's Christmas Carol, and that's just awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. But on the whole, I got to respect Connie Baker for doing the Gallifrey and Buccaneer song. Oh yeah, that <gasps> was amazing from Connie Baker. And I wish but, you could play it. You should be able to. You should be able to find it. I think no. I think the copyright. I meant that that would get. I know that would get flagged. No, we play it six seconds. <laughs> <laughs> Ten verses. Maybe. We'll see if we can find it. Um, but on the whole, I wasn't impressed. It was so um, scattered because it was like two people telling about it. I did like um, Evelyn and Sally's story arc. That was quite dark, and I quite enjoyed that. Maybe I'll give it a four on that. But on the whole, I did not enjoy it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm no, be... that's fair. Uh, that's absolute. Uh, that's absolutely fair because I, I, without going into my own personal rating, at first it was low because I was I did not read the cliff's notes to this i knew that we are the assignment was i had never heard this before was we're doing this episode this tuesday talk like a pirate let's go i went all right i can do this and then life got in the way and i couldn't listen to it until today and i literally finished it almost a couple few hours ago Same and here. i did not know this was going to be a musical I did not know that it was going oh, to be musical didn't know that heavy. Part. Okay. No, so it was very quite surprising for it to find out that oh, this is a musical, and that it leaned into it. And I'm like, wait, wait, I'm just not. In, I have to be in a mood for a musical. So I think I at first I was I, I everything that Mark is saying I do agree with because I had those feelings during my little roller coaster, and I would call this one a roller coaster of emotion. Because there's parts that are absolutely hilarious, and there are parts that are very, very dark. I mean, yeah, wow, yeah. dark. Where I'm like, Whoa, yeah. wait, what am I listening? Yes, I'd be trying That's to look that- for the spoilers video, but I can't find it. So just in case, spoiler alert! Spoiler we're, alert! We're, we're going to go deep into it. Yeah. Very deep into this. Um, there's like one of the bits where I was listening to the audio drama about where. Colin, the Six Doctor is challenging one of the pirates, and I just went, oh, "I know exactly what he's going to do." <laughs> you know, what I mean, before he, since he started the betting, and he was like, "Yeah, this is the metabolism." Gonna was going to yep. be be u- utilized to his favor. I'll just say that. Exactly. Yeah. Sometimes I wish I had that. Um, oh yeah, remember, <laughs> guys, drink. Yeah. Remember, expensive. guys, drink responsibility. And drink to your legal age, whatever country you're in, or drink water. Mm, no, I water. Have Only my, uh... time is going to ever fix a uh, uh, fix your your inebriated state. So always remember that too. And always you have to give yourself water and time. Do not get into a car and drive. Also, be responsible. Just drive. Be responsible Follow while drinking. Rum. And uh, <laughs> all local laws must be applied. So moving on. <laughs> Just in case, this bottle, I haven't opened it, and it absolutely scares me. I'm not sure. It's not glass. <laughs> Maybe you should I do just, it. Mark. I'm not sure if you can read that. A hundred thousand. Yeah. For, for our viewer, for our listeners on the podcast, Mark is holding up a bottle of vodka that is red chili vodka, and it's got a very lovely photo of a yeah. um, skull that's eyes are burning out of its head, mm. and it says oh, that it has over or 100,000 Scovilles. And that's the rating for how how much heat and the intensity of the heat of a chili pepper can be. I am actually scared of even trying to I drop a not. disc. No. I can't, I can't do yeah, jalapeno. But first drink, I'm actually dubious of trying. I've tried many drinks, done bar work before, worked in many bars across, across Europe, and this is the first bottle we just went, 
Yeah, maybe not. No, that's something I would be afraid to smell because sometimes scents are of, of that chili oil can really get into, can burn too. Hello, no. third doctor with a Deadpool. <laughs> what is that accent on the ad? That's Ooh, Joe. That's the the Jody at the Jody. Oh, that's uh, yeah. That's a uh, that's Jody accent. Ish. That's a Yorkshire Ish. accent. That's her doing. That's oh. her. Yeah. Yorkshire, not Shire. Yorkshire. Shire. Yorkshire. Shire. Yorkshire. Yorkshire. But it's Jody's. It's already bad York, enough. I Yorkshire. can't do anything. Yeah, she's from Sheffield, which is South Yorkshire. So continuing on for our ratings, uh, the Reverend Omegon. I can't do all that. Omegon. <laughs> how did you like? How did you hate? Let us know your rating and everything about this Big Finish audio, sir. Hmm. Because I did listen to it long ago when I went through everything through Sp that's available on Spotify. Sadly, only it took me a year to listen to everything. And so I didn't remember. I did pull out the clip notes just to refresh the memories. Oh, yes, understandably. But my rating, I'm going to be between Dave and Mark. That's Ooh. fair. I'll, I'll give it a six because uh, I, you said, Melanie, you had to be in the mood to listen to a musical. Uh, I have the theater background, but uh, eh, not so much for me. And Pirates, like, okay, I once seen one pirate story or seen them all. When I re listened, of course, the mm -hmm. the uh, Pirate King, for a moment, I thought it was uh, Captain Knuckles from the Marvelous Misadventures of Flapjack. Oh, Flapjack, come here. I got two. I got wooden hands. I got wooden legs. Oh, give me some candy. Say, <laughs> <laughs> so, what? Uh, candy. Oh, candy. I'll have some in. Tasty cakes. <laughs> oh, tasty. Oh. Mm. <laughs> oh, and let me scratch my booty on that one there. Oh. Yeah, all right. I don't want to know what you're okay. scratching your booty on. <laughs> scratch booty. Uh, so, this is like, okay. She's telling a pirate story. I said, okay. And why is she telling this to Jenny then, like halfway through? Because it took me two days to listen to this because of everything going on. Mm hmm. Oh, and the picture is wrong because the picture it was it stated in the audio multicolored. So I'm going by that. And two wooden. That is true. That is true. That is true because there's one part where he uh, he tries to hide a few times in the water and they see some multicolored here and mm -hmm. they do make fun of his garish dresses. His, his like garish part dress. Three or so. Uh, like, oh, foul coated yeah. wretch. <laughs> so that kind of throws up because sure he did wear blue when he was would cost extra to make his actual. <laughs> He was with Evelyn, so with, with Evelyn. It's not Evelyn. Evil, Evelyn. Evelyn. Oh, Evelyn. Evelyn with Skeletor. <laughs> you have evil. vomiting boobs. So listen to it. It's like, what's going on here? What's going on? Oh, yes. It was all about being there for Jenny, which, okay, understandable. It raised my numbers a bit higher. It's just because Jenny needed someone to be there with her, even though she didn't want to. And that just, you know, okay, I understand it. The, and because I have Spotify with ads going on, and I told Christian this one, it really kicked me because uh, something similar, but not the same. One of the ads was for Wegman's Pharmacy. Wegman was the name of my late, my late director who passed away a number of years ago around this time period. So every time that freaking ad comes in and saying Wegman, so, oh my God, I'm thinking of Paul. And, you know, doctor tells Jenny why Evelyn was there to be with her. I kept thinking, you know, if I had a time machine too, I would go back. Not to the say, oh, Paul, you need to not do what you do because you're going to catch, you know, the dreaded, illness and that would be your death but around that time just to console him so that what hit me a little further with the story the day having that mm -hmm. the extra day being there you know jenny needed someone she didn't know it but it was important if you can be there to 
for someone, it is important to do so. You know, just console them, talk things out, and, you know, you may make a difference. Or mm -hmm. just to know that uh, you have at least one moment in time with them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things could change. And that was one one piece where my initial rating was very low because, again, I have to be in the mood for a musical. Uh, a lot of this I wasn't ready for. I, It's really forward when it comes to campiness and very forward on being a little more free-wielding with the storytelling and really slapsticky at times and just hilarious. But to your point, Tom, it when it got dark and serious it hit hard so this episode this big finish surprisingly is very well balanced but those scales are at two extremes and the more i talk through this the more i want to keep my rating keeps going a little higher and higher because honestly at first i was like this is a three this is oh, i can't even do this i wasn't paying attention to 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 um colin and his amazing Pirates of the Penzance. I'm a modern major general, but this time he's a Gallifreyan buccaneer. And him mm -hmm. having fun with it. And then I'm losing the words because now I'm so focused on him hitting all the words in, in that staccato delivery. And he's doing it perfectly. And I'm just, I, I'm almost taken out of that because of it. But it was just so par excellence of, of how just he flawlessly executed that. And I was surprised how long it kept going. But then you have these parts where it's just, that you have the elation you're like oh my god da, 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 da. but then you have those those lows of i there was dark horror in this when when uh red jasper decides to cut out the tongue of the guy who wouldn't back him what was it john johnson or bill billington or tom, tom thompson? thompson or does it <laughs> another again another one of evelyn's trying to tell her story and she's just give coming up with weird name pirate names and how how come you all sound the same because it's literally the same actor and we're being finished doing the voices. And it's, it's so again, you're crazy, irreverent, funny. And then, whoa, we hit something hard. So very precisely balanced when you stop to really think about this episode, Nick, what do you think about this? Now I'm not, I keep coming back and going all over the place, but right. And this is a world. So what 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 is your kind of final rating that um, and i think everybody hears ratings are kind of in a little bit of a flux because the more you think of it the more you can shade it down but you could also turn around and go well i can make an argument for the other side nick where did you land and then tell me your thoughts of what we haven't really discussed about yet i'll give it a seven out of ten my lover and i'll tell you why i want to um, know why yes why well jackie rayner she's reliable often brilliant writer you know i always enjoy what she writes and she has fun she's obviously having fun um with the storytelling devices themselves so we're in on that joke and then you've got maggie stables um the late maggie stables who is who i really like i think mm -hmm. she's a great companion a great foil for sexy and uh she's great in this because she knows a little bit of the history the real history compared to um you know movie pirates and so mm -hmm. does the so they kind of play off each other really well. Uh, she can do sorrow and she can do levity and she gets to do both here. You know, people often um, complain that Big Finish plays it safe. A lot of its stories, you know, stick to a formula, classic TV Doctor Who formula. So here they're not playing it safe. They're having fun. They're putting music in it. I'd forgotten it was a musical too. So wait, we got songs? Um, so yeah, they have a good time with that. And also... I just like the kind of the ways that the characters are telling the stories, but putting themselves, their personalities into the stories too. So uh, the doctor compliments himself when he tells, puts himself in the story. Mm -hmm. Fine, distinguished looking sailor wearing a stylish outfit, he describes himself as. <laughs> and he calls himself handsome. And those kind of things tickle me. Uh, also, when he starts singing, and that's the cliffhanger. So it's like instead of <laughs> someone screaming or him going, Perry! You've got him starting to sing. Oh, no. <laughs> You've got to tune in next week to see if he hits those notes. So all that is a lot of fun. Uh, my favorite line in the whole thing is uh, when the doctor says, well, excuse me for not killing people for fun. Just mm -hmm. the way he says it. That was wonderful. But the reason why I only give it a seven is I'm listening to it thinking, who is this for? This isn't for Mark. This isn't for uh, 
you know, a casual listener. I don't think it would work for them. And I would disagree with you about the balance. I think the balance okay. is off. Bill Oddie's wonderful. He was great in the goodies when I was a kid. Kind of a sketch comedy, um, very likable bloke. He's very over the top, which works for a mad pirate, but it doesn't quite work for me with all the other elements in the story. It's just a little bit too much. If he brought it down a tiny bit, it would have worked really well, but he's being Bill Hardy, so mm -hmm. he's crazy. Um, apart from that, it works well, and I'm gonna stick with my seven, yeah. No, that's no, that's that's absolutely fair because I think I, I, I think you are right on for the fur to be bound to be perfectly balanced or well balanced, maybe not because it was it's not the light and the dark or the, the comedic and the humor, or the, the, the humor and the drama, it was different. At, there was a lot more different aspects on the scatter plot that maybe didn't exactly feel balanced. So I, 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 can, I can see what you mean where it was about. It, it, okay, maybe not. Christian, we're not waiting for, we're not waiting for an after party. You get to go now or... He's waiting for you a commercial. Can go after commercial. Or we'd be going to go to commercial breaks <laughs> first. But when we return, I'll be giving my own review. And then Melanie, <laughs> ah, I get it right. Melanie will be giving hers. When we return, <laughs> please continue to stay logged on to Nin. We are going to be high time. That was a weird R. Right back. Hi. Hi. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. You have more options than ever before when choosing a film, a television, or internet series, a book to curl up with, or even a radio show or podcast. Get to know the people who are creating for you. The Hangin' With Web Show, hosted by award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pometry, is the Internet's fastest-growing web talk show series. The Hangin' With Web Show features professional, yet casual, in-depth interviews with creative arts and entertainment pros. Meet the people behind a digital revolution in creating more quality content than ever before in the history of media. Find the Hanging With Web Show on YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, or simply go to www.hangingwithshow.com. That's www.h-a-n-g-i-n-with-show.com. Give me the tosses. Now, give me the TARDIS. Now, give it here. Down demon. Now, it's not a TARDIS. Power of Christ compels you to give me that damn TARDIS. Now, I... Now, I... Ah. 31-2. <laughs> we will begin October 1st at the Legend of the Traveling TARDIS on our Facebook page and our YouTube channel. Just subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe to either one. <laughs> uh, you can go on our YouTube Prime. channel. Make sure you subscribe now. You can see the link at the bottom, youtube.com slash the legend of the traveling TARDIS. 31 days of nothing but the TARDIS and Dalek Hal in the most 
haunting ways that you could see them. We're going to be doing it all 31 days uh, of October. If you're somebody who likes the paranormal or stuff like that, we're going to be introducing you to some, some cool stuff starting October 1st. But if you can't wait, we already have an album out for Halloween Horror Nights over at Universal Studios. We don't, we're not sponsored. We're not dealing, we're not uh, affiliated with Comcast or anything. But we found that a lot of people love it to see the TARDIS over at Halloween Horror Nights. And there are pictures on the YouTube channel and on the Facebook page if you want to check them out. As we continue our review of uh, Doctor Who and the Pirates starring Colin Baker as the Sixth Doctor. And uh, we'll continue our review. But since Melanie Here on Talk Like a Pirate Day for those joining and uh, wondering why on earth we're dressing up now for we talk like a pirate episodes. Because we usually don't do this, but it's Talk Like a Pirate Day. Yes, we do. Yeah, <laughs> I can't wait at your place. <laughs> at your place. <laughs> so, and if you have your own ratings, <laughs> I, I see um, one rating came up, I believe, Seven for the Seas for Andrew. Uh, he gave it a seven. And if you have any details as to what you thought, if you've had heard the audio or haven't heard the audio yet, again, just a reminder, spoilers, we're going to be talking about this episode. It's only a couple hours long. And good news is uh, I went ahead and downloaded it for our team. It's only four bucks. For a two-hour audio for four bucks, not bad. So go ahead and download it off of the Big Finish audios. Or you can listen to Spotify for free. The only problem is Spotify is tricky because you got to find, like, every track on different levels and weird yes. weird stuff out there that's the only reason why i don't like spotify so much sometimes uh, honestly uh, four bucks just just to hear colin baker perform that Baker's gallifrey and buccaneer that was really intense and i that is something i i honestly will go back and listen to and and because i was just so shocked at first and then again focused on is he actually doing this is he actually hearing the words or, or, or hitting the words properly and i wasn't really was. hearing the sentences and it being it wasn't going in i was being too analytical mm -hmm. so yeah i want to go back and listen to it so for honestly four bucks it's 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 worth it so christian mihardi ah uh, mihardi ah uh, me lady i guess would be my turn to give the review uh, i'm gonna take this off because i can focus a little bit Especially if I'm doing the oh, What you're wanting is depth perception. Oh, I want a depth perception. Yes. And a dollar store compass. <laughs> it's already broken. <laughs> um, it's always points north. Yeah. No, even if you're it's a point. It's, just, it's broken. Uh, well, that's what you get for a buck 25. Mm -hmm. The episode. Here's the tricky part in this thing. And I'll, I'll bring this up to the, uh, to the other panelists. Um, Nick, you made a you made a good call on this. Who wow. is this for? Was the question, and why was it for? Um, I remember we when you had the fame of you know uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Then all of a sudden, the Curse of the Black Spot came out. That one episode, and I was just like, oh, okay. And it was the same thing with uh, with Marvel movies when we had. Um, what was it? Uh, the uh, the Doctor Mysterio. Mysterio. The Doctor Mysterio movie. Yeah, the Curse of Black Spot. I'll be watching the Sea Devils. Oh, I forgot about the Sea Devils. And honestly, I could forget about the Sea Devils. <laughs> um, I couldn't even rate it at first. I had to hear it again this morning. Jamar says there's that episode with the siren and the black spot and the hand. Yeah. And. It, in a, and in a weird sense, it's kind of writing on that. It was just like it was on its own world. Um, I don't want to review the Black Spot. I want to try to uh, review the, the Pirates one. Um, the only good thing that... I didn't know how to rate this, Melanie. I really didn't. And I had to hear it again. And I was just mm -hmm. like, I really don't know... I think was it you, Nick, who said you didn't even know where this was going? I, I I audibly I didn't even know what I was listening to at some point. It was just really weird. It started off as a pirate thing, in the same essence that the Holy Terror. It started off what seemed to be like a Monty Python comedy, but at some point there was a lever that was something snapped, and then all of a sudden we were in this huge tragedy. But I think it was a great payoff. Uh, to get to know these characters and I think they're bumbling idiots and then all of a sudden the story changes and you start to like these characters not even more there was a deeper motive 
you know, the words holy terror were, were really embedded very well. That was brilliantly written by um, the guy. I can't think of his Rob name. Sherman. Sherman. Rob Sherman. Sorry. So when I got to this, first of all, the positives. Yes, a cliffhanger where the doctor is about to sing and then he cliffhangs it. That kick. Okay. That I'll, I'll I'll give you that. I'll give you I'll give you that. <laughs> And when the story changes from why is the doctor here? Why why is the doctor and um, Evelyn talking to Sally? What's Sally got to do with this? What's going on? And I think what Jacqueline was trying to do was write a story to work in between these two because then you're going to see that Evelyn is consoling Sally, but it's really Evelyn consoling herself and the mm. doctor having to do that twist because of what happened to Sally. And Sally kind of came into it. She started singing herself. But then I feel like we kind of lost it. It was just like, okay, we we're, we know something happened to Sally and that was it. It's not pertinent to what's going on with the pirate story, but I really wanted to know what happened to Sally and what became of it. And like I said, I really wanted to like this. And in some cases, I do. I, I really thought that some of the risk taking that you mentioned, Nick, was, you know, being a musical. Yeah. Which I got to go with Mark. I'm not a big musical fan. I had a professor, Professor Rogers over at Rollins College, and he said, There's two people in the world people who like musicals, and the other are dead. And I said, Well, put my funeral out there. <laughs> I'm not a big musical guy. And I'd love uh, Gallifrey Buccaneer. If anybody wants a chance, not only you can download it for 40 four bucks, but um, I think you can find uh, Gallifrey Buccaneer just on YouTube search. Hmm. I want to, Melanie, well, if I'm wrong about the way I phrase this, or hopefully it makes sense, I actually envy people who enjoy this because I really want to enjoy this more than I did. Hmm. I really no, want to see fair. things that other people thought but i kind of lost the way because i was listening to it was it a pirate story was it sally story was it evelyn story and the pirate story just kind of got lost i see what jacqueline did but it didn't work for me and that's all um the red jasper story and especially him knocking off uh that boy so that evelyn had something to relate to to sally hmm. i was kind of caught off guard that the doctor didn't want to help at first. That Evelyn had to kick him and go, uh, um, you're going to help these people? Like, nope, we got to go. <laughs> so um, it, it got confusing whether this was reality or even, you know, who's telling the story, what was true, what wasn't true, um, or did it even matter? Yeah, there was one part... Um, why did Evelyn lie that the doctor died? I didn't even get that. Hmm. You remember that scene where the doctor takes a sword it. up and he gets killed? And oh yeah, yeah, because it mm -hmm. was the doctor, and then it was like, well, no, that was the first mate. Mm -hmm. Why would? Yeah. Well, why was that? Why was that a thing? I didn't understand what what why that changed or what. Cliffhanger to part four or something like that. I don't know. I don't even think it was a cliffhanger. Though. No, I it was, just, it was, I, was it, the I, beginning, it was towards the beginning of the story. And I think for me, I said, I felt that was almost a part of the getting the, I, I thought it was a, not the word plot device, but I'm going to use the word plot device um, to let the audience know that as the story is being articulated by Evelyn and the doctor, that they're recounting the story and there's a huge margin of error. And that they can accidentally say the wrong thing and that they're going to use this to comedic purpose. The and unreliable narrator. Yeah, so that's, yeah. Unreliable well, narrator. From a certain point of view. From a certain <laughs> point of view. Well, if you hear um, how Evelyn was saying, was to start off with some of their sailor names, which was hmm. like Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist. Little Nell. David yeah, Copperfield. I, I just, I David just, Copperfield. I, I guess I didn't understand why. What was the purpose of that? It just really caught me off guard. There were quite a few things that caught me off guard in the story, and not that mm -hmm. I was like I said, I really wanted to like the story. I'm not a big pirates fan. I'm a big, huge uh, Pirates of the Car Caribbean fan. I thought the 
four movies were pretty good. Um, I didn't like the fact that they did, uh, you know, the Curse of the Black Spot. I'm just like, wait a minute, we're just parodying, you know, but go ahead, do it. Let's see, let's see how far it goes. And it just, and then we went into this alien hospital and weird stuff. And then just like, okay, this is normal doctor who just goes into the bazaar. Mm. Uh, we'll try to parody stuff. But uh, like I said, I don't want to be that guy that says this sucked, but at the same time, just going like, I'm trying to find things to like about it. And it wasn't kicking in. So to end my little thing, I give it a five. Okay. You gasped. I just, I, I, <laughs> yeah, point I, got I, I, point I got to, what are you doing? Yeah, man, Nick is going to uh, kick my yes. butt. And that's, it oh, doesn't work because, you know, I gave you a three. Yeah. So, no, I just, like I said, I really wanted to give it a higher number, but a uh, Gallifrey Buccaneer is probably the most awesome thing that came out of this. There, no doubt. And, um, like I said, when Star Trek, uh, Strange New Worlds did its, uh, did its musical. Mm -hmm. And somebody showed me the video of the the Klingon singing. I'm like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> at least I can say Doctor Who did it better, in yeah. my opinion, on that one. It's like even with me, but like with the musicals, when Buffy did the musical, yep. I I think it was like one song I liked about it. Mm. My favorite episode is Hush. Ah. All music, oh, yeah. My head. I was song. Where, say where it was completely the episode was complete silence until oh, one word. Where it was, yeah, the whole episode where everyone's lost a voice, and we're yep. just at the end, we just say, I think we should talk. It was classic, yes. I thought that was brilliant. And, I mean, the, the and, whole episode, they don't have to memorize anything, and then they get and they can't talk to each other, so mm -hmm. it's just like, oh, what do you do mm -hmm. here now? That was awesome. So you got you got the two like spectrums, haven't you? You got like in Buffy, Buffy, where you got the Buffy the musical where everyone raves about, mm -hmm. and you got Hush, mm -hmm. and not many yeah. people like Hush. Mm -hmm. I loved Hush. And to me, that's I love Hush. And I, I'm probably I, gonna get hate here now from like Kevo. <laughs> no, Hush was amazing. no, I loved well, Hush. They, I think there's room for both. I to 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 steal what you just said because literally I was going to start talking about those two episodes <laughs> really? and I I legit had hush and I was going to say that and the whole preface of me bringing it up was going to be my rating is around a five as well only because I'm going middle ground and real maybe maybe six but in the ep in the episode of hush for those, like we were just saying, if you've never seen Buffy, it was an episode that after Joss Whedon had been told how amazing the writing is on Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Slayer mm -hmm. he comes out with an episode that's no dialogue. And that was Hush. And then again, you have the musical episode. But I loved both of those because this is the key part of the importance of marketing and a teaser before something. I knew going in, oh, it's a musical episode. Oh, this is going to be a little darker. And I don't see much, you know, there's there's stuff talking about, you know, it being more, it's going to be a little different. We didn't know it was going to be silent, but the marketing was, it's going to be definitely different. For me, this particular episode, because I, I read the back and now I, I, I read the... I read the the, the, the the statement. I want to say liner notes because that's a CD and I'm old. Um, but to tell <laughs> you what uh, the, the, the episode kind of encapsulates. In hindsight, it's written like you would write a Gilbert and Sullivan kind of thing of, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to have terrible, you know, amazing thrills. This is going to happen. Uh, be amazed at such and such and such and such. Thrill at such and such and such. You know, it was that style of that 19... 40s 30s kind of how to market something and i didn't catch that i didn't catch that it was going to be musical um this episode gave me whiplash because mm. i wasn't prepared for it if i know i'm going about to go on the rock and roller coaster and i'm walking on it at at disney at a uh, Disney's Hollywood studio at Hollywood studios. Yes. And I walk oh. on or better yet universal. I'm about to go on the Hulk coaster. I'm walking on it and I see it go click, 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 boom. I'm preparing myself mentally. And I've already known that I already went to the bathroom before I got on the damn ride because I know I'm going to go. 
boom and we, you know, and <laughs> flip around. So I know to prepare myself for that exhilaration. I was not prepared for a musical. So it started going and I like musicals if I'm in the mood for one. And then I was not prepared for the, the really, the beginning having the very big high notes of how it was just how meta funny it was, how Tom Thompson, J uh, John Jameson, uh, John Johnson, you know, the, not knowing the names and her changing the story here and there. And at one point at the very beginning, Sally just kind of going, why are you here? I don't want to hear a story. Can you please go away? And I'm sitting here going, yeah, can we, can we get this? I'm with her. I don't know where this is going. What, what are you doing? So she was the confused person and that was me. And from I, I wonder how much of the audience, at least speaking, at least for Christian now, going, I was him too. I was I was over here being confused, going, what the what on earth am I about to listen to? And so and I mean, there once I kind of got the feeling that we are going very avant with this, to uh, I think it was Nick's point that it's this was not formulaic. If I had known I'm going into a non-formulaic thing, if I know I I know what I'm preparing myself for if i go into a christopher nolan movie i also know what i'm preparing myself for if i'm going into a terry gilliam or gilliam i can never say his name movie because it's gonna be all over the place i'm gonna you know it's that kind of all right i'm gonna be a little bit more loosey-goosey here i'm gonna have there's gonna be a lot more heady parts they're gonna be some really funny stuff it's a little bit more dark i know what i'm getting into it's like if i tell you right now there's an amazing movie right now out there, and it's called The Menu. It's on Hulu. I highly recommend it because it's hilarious. Half of this audience is not going to like me because I missed out on a very key word, and it is hilarious, but it's also a horror movie. So you're going to go in there thinking, oh, this is funny. It's a really specific type of funny because it's going to be balanced out with a lot of gory horror, and it's going to be dark. So you, you, going into it, all right, I'm in the mindset for the menu. Again, that is actually a really, really good movie. If you have a chance, you want to watch something Maybe very like, funny and very horror, watch the menu. It's on Hulu. It's on is, this, is this the one you should have added to your list last week? Oh, I'm telling you. It's, uh, I'm telling you. Yeah, I would have. I Yes, because I watched it after the fact, and I would have been just going on and on and on. Well, anyway, but that's on a that, very on, specific on thing. But, sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead. No, 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 you're fine. Uh, on your specific story that you just mentioned, we're not going into something. Here's something really ironic and does deal with the horror movie. The first movie in the trilogy that I saw of the Evil Dead was not one or two. I saw Army of the Dead. Army of Darkness. Army Darkness. Of Darkness. No, Dark A lot of people came yes. in on the third one, funny enough. And I then they went backwards, the then two, one. then one. Yeah, I, I never <laughs> knew about one and two. I just really? knew about three. I thought it was a horror movie. I enjoyed this it immensely. Is my boomstick exactly? It was it was uh, Bruce Campbell at his height, and it was just like all the stuff. He was misogynic. He was silly. He was stupid. He was just you know. And, and it if was you just followed Ramy. You baby. knew what Ramy was about. Hence yeah. why it screwed a lot of us up who watched Spider Man and went, "What is this? Yeah. This hmm. is really good. This is blockbuster. Hey. <laughs> this isn't. This isn't Ramy. Wait." Okay, there's Bruce. We're fine. Go ahead. But yeah, I, but that brought me to one and two, and I still love three the most because it was the funniest and it was fun. But I was introduced, I was waiting for a horror movie, and I was just like, oh, the, it's about this guy named Ash who's getting his ass kicked by these evil dead guys, and that's the whole fun of it. I knew right away when I was coming into this that there was a musical, and already, I wouldn't say I already had, I had my expectations because, like Mark, I'm not a big musical guy. And I did hear, before I heard uh, heard the audio, I did hear Gallifrey and Buccaneer, and I thought that was the most awesome thing I've ever heard Colin Baker do in my entire life. And that should be bronze and put somewhere to be forever. <laughs> but but were I, you ready for all the other subsequent me uh, melodies and, and melees, but all the other harmonies <laughs> and musical numbers and everything else coming? And I'm going, okay, everyone can sing. That's nice. But... Seriously, no, why? I actually thought the audio was like a post. I thought the, the that we had the story, and then 
Colin sung the song, you know, as an end, as a bonus for your big finish. I didn't know about the musical in the middle or the other mm -hmm. songs that were playing. Yeah. And that was one of the big questions. I said, like, why is this a musical? Only because Evelyn was trying to calm down Sally, mm -hmm. and that was it. And that, I, I meant that, yeah, it's, it's at times you can't just follow the formula at most. Sometimes you do want to take risks and do something a little different, but it's still got to move the story somehow. It's still got to go with what's going on. And I, I was like, I kind of like the music, but it's just like, so why did we do this? I mean, like, I think it should have been, I don't even think Sally should have been in it. I don't know what Sally was doing. I think maybe. She was the foil because she was a killer. Right. By the way, again, that, you're an but... hour in, you already know we're getting spoilers. So. Mm -hmm. Shame on you yeah, for yeah. still listening. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, guys. I, video. I don't know what, what happened to it. The other possibility uh, is, is. is what Melanie said earlier on is that maybe we are supposed to be like Sally. Not killers, but as in the person who's going, okay, I can't be asked with you telling me a story. Okay. And so basically, we were, I'm sitting there thinking, like Melanie said, yeah, Sally, she's right. Like, why the hell are you telling me this? Why am I listening to this? Mm -hmm. And as the story progress, I think it would have been better if Sally were a distant character, not related into the story as much. But like Evelyn is like sitting at a bench, and somebody comes up to her, and they sit down, and they notice that she's like not well, and the doctor has gone off somewhere or done something, you know, to leave Evelyn just to kind of like calm down and and do things. And somebody just walks up, notices Evelyn, and she's crying her eyes out, mm -hmm. and. And then she tells the story of what happened. Yeah, that would work. But they were, yeah. they were trying to get a handle on the moment with Sally to, you know, offset what she was feeling, whereas the doctor was trying to console Evelyn. Evelyn was trying to console Sally at the same time. And it was just odd. Not that I didn't like Sally as a character, but then she does her song, spoiler. Because she gets pulled in. Yeah, and, and she's not yeah, good. Whoever like, did, whoever did the song for Sally, she was awesome. But, but I think it would have been better if the character, like you said, Melly, were pulled in naturally as opposed to here comes Evelyn and she's pulling her in, you know, trying to tell her story. I think she should have been somebody sitting at a bench and then trying to pull in this character, Sally, into the story so it was natural. Because, like you said, why was Sally sitting there? And if we're at the audience, we're like, yeah, why are we listening to this nonsense? What, what's going on? And if there was an importance to the kid, the, the kid who got killed by, um, what was it, Jack uh, Red Jim. Jasper? Jack, yeah, Jim London. Well, Jim got killed by right. Jasper. Then why were the other characters just not as important? Meriwether. Why was so it I John Johnson and all that? I mean, if everybody, if every life is important, why were the other lives not as important except for the one that got lost? Swan know. was hilarious. Yes. I <laughs> love how Swan right. had that very yes. st uh, steed kind of foppish pirate of that gentleman pirate of just bumbling through of like, but I'm a fantastic captain. What are you talking about? And right. uh, I really did like him because there was times where his sass matched the sixth doctor sass mm. and they were just sassing each other back and forth <laughs> when they were, when they both were on the raft and then they got back onto the, they got to the Island and then they, they, well, you're not going back there. I don't know how to swim and just going back and forth the back. I enjoyed that. There's a lot of parts where That's I true. can say scenes that, that were, I highly enjoyed thinking back to it, but as a whole, if I had just been told you're about to listen to something that's very irreverent, that's very very crazy that's very just work it's very experimental for big finish just hang on it's gonna have music it's gonna have all these things and you're gonna just have whiplash go for it i think i would have been enjoyed it if i just prepared myself for if somebody told crazy. you what the ride was about yes but i think the main message from the actual story is literally doesn't matter how much you're going through yourself if you've got one person who cares for you, you can move on. You can live for another day. Yes, that was very that was one. A dangerous message, though, because not everyone has someone to drop in and be there for them. You know, some things we have to cope with alone. Mm -hmm. um, so saying you need and, someone else to cope could be seen as a dangerous message to put across. No, that's true. 
I think if the message was pushed more on the, and I think that maybe towards the end, they kind of did that, trying to push the fact that mm -hmm. to, to, to Evelyn going, look, you're the one that helped become that person for Jem. Right. So that's the good thing. Try to be that person for the other, the other one. I think even Tom had brought that, had, had brought that up beautifully is that, trying to making the message so that the onus is on us to be altruistic and good to others but yeah. it needs to be really pushed that way because you're right nick it's dangerous to say if you're alone and you don't have anybody else you're 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 going to be forgotten by the wayside and right, that but, that's kind of but but you if know? you look at the story what actually happened was when sally was in the dark period Eva Lynn is the one who came to Sally. Mm -hmm. And the doctor, when Eva Lynn was in her darkest period, after Jim London, there was a doctor who really could have said, oh, it's um, Eva Lynn. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's trying to say. It's basically making sure that you, doesn't matter what you're going through, will try to care for someone else. Yeah. And that's what I was trying to get to. It was like, you caring for someone else even though you're going through a hard time like um evelyn was going through after the situation where she couldn't save jim Lon london mm -hmm. from jasper and then she gets back home and she sees the letter from sally on her doorstep and then she literally rushes over to make sure she's okay mm -hmm. and or... i think that's what or did yeah, she get the note and it was too late? That's why the doctor brought Evelyn back like within a few hours or a day. So that's why Evelyn's like, okay, um, well, let me tell you a story. And um, I don't know how I'm going to do this because I just dealt with a tragedy myself. But I'm going to try to console you as best I can. You know, So we have all this craziness going on. And uh, yeah, the doctor dies. Oh, no, I'm wrong. That was wrong. And oh, he didn't have two hooks and... Yeah, two peg legs. Two peg legs. legs. No, no. You can't balance. I'm just trying to remember everything. Just, um, yeah, stay with me. Stay with me. You know, you're going to make it. You know, I. Yeah. You know, and that's why she said, you know, I'm tired, doctor. I, I, I can't do this anymore. So, and then the doctor says, you know, this is what happened. This is why she's here for you. This is why we're here for you. And you made it through the night. And then Sally goes, yes, I, I do feel better. R5. I do feel no, better R5. and um, decides to sing along. So it's we try all of us. So we can we can only do so much. We can try our best, but you, we cannot keep the world upon our shoulders all the time. We do need help. We do. And that's like I said, Doctor Evelyn, because Evelyn's just trying to say, okay, I I'm your friend. I can I can get you through this. We'll get through this together. I'm tired, Doctor. It's, you know, please take over. All but the just curious, well, Evelyn couldn't get her story you know? straight if it was that important to her. Well, she, and, Evelyn just went, uh, I, um, where's the doctor? Oh, he'll be here in a moment. Like, so she's trying to take control of everything. Like, um, yeah, this happened. Uh, this happened, you know, just random thoughts and ideas trying to put them all together. Say, yeah, you stay with me, stay with me, you know, we're gonna get through this. And but if the doctor told a story all together, you know, everything would have been fine. But this was about Evelyn trying to do the right thing for Sally. And the doctor so yeah, sure, I'll step in. I'll help you along the way. We'll work on this together until the very end. And so from that certain point of view, it makes sense. But from us to listen to this going, like, Sally, what are you talking about? Uh, but we kept you we kept you alive. We kept you thinking, you know, all the happiness didn't make any difference in your head. But here's a tragedy that Evelyn had to go through. And so, Sally, you did the same thing. Yes, you were the driver, but nothing could have been changed. And that's the thing we have to live with. Tragedy happens. Mm -hmm. But as long as someone's there to help you, you can all get through it. And that was one piece at the very end where I wasn't, where I felt like it was timey wimey, but I couldn't catch like when the, the envelope was delivered and then when they went back in time to go. Because her, her uh, Sally had even brought up the point of like, no, that letter's still in my was like it's still somewhere else, so it hadn't been delivered yet. It's yeah. still in and the letterbox. Did you break it to oh. letterbox? Yeah, it was still in the postbox mailing system. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it was the, how did you already get that? And that part made me go, oh, ooh, ooh, okay. I have a time machine. Am I the only one that realized that chocolate saves the day sometimes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I am the handyman. It did kind of. That one guy. It did kind of. It did. Tom lost his tongue. Oh, talk about Not chocolate. Man, have you got uh, through with it? No, I still have some. <laughs> <laughs> I still have some because I keep looking at it. Just, just and I've got to October on certain pieces. No, I still have some. Have you joined the subspace network? Um, Andrew, can you send me that link? Because I know the, the, U, the X page for Doctor Who opened something called the Subspace Network. I think it's a chat for X. And uh, if you can send us the link or post it on there, I appreciate it. But I know that their their, their official U, uh, Twitter X <laughs> has it out there. Sorry, uh, just caught. Subspace net Network. Subwave. Subwave Subwave. Network. Subspace is different. <laughs> First remain out there, and uh, I don't have don't satellite TV, so I can't it. watch it. So I like the fact that we encourage people to watch, uh, listen to Doctor Who and the Pirates, and now everybody wants to see the Curse of the Black <laughs> Spot again. <laughs> hey, I'm, you know, if you're in, if you're in the mood, uh, it's an Insta link I have. Yeah, we'll take it if you want to post it on here. I, I want to keep up with things because the rumor has it, or at least it, it there, there's a rumor out that. Uh, September 23rd, we're supposed to have a trailer. That's Next what Saturday. Everybody's been yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if if what normally happens, it'll come on roughly about half six when Strictly Come Dancing's on on the BBC channel. Is normally when they advertise the new trailer between that and eight o'clock is roughly the normal time. Okay. Gotcha. In the meantime, we've got season two of Redacted has started so we've got original bbc oh. doctor who content sorry i'm looking at optimus prime yeah i got a trailer yeah, you are oh uh, he's talking about a trailer okay but i'm bumps well, well, i was, was just more concerned about the moon pie tom oh the joke about the moon pie mm. yeah back when i started work it used to cost 50 cents Thanks, and now it's 59 cents so those are the pie rates <clears throat> well nick will, nick will remember this freddo's Freddos. Yeah, you don't have a 10p Freddos. Fr chocolate frog thing. Yeah. Yes. They've gone up to about like 75p to almost a pound in places. Yeah, but they're worth it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Freddos, come on. <laughs> it's so oh. sad everyone's talking about chocolates and candies. And meanwhile, I'm literally starting to stockpile every that type of packeted ranch flavored everything. It's for, a kind of close to that. Time That's what Mark's people. getting. He's getting ranch everything. I can't do right. the liquid, so it's ranch packets of just every brand, every everything I can find. That's ranch. Okay, are we in the after party? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, we got to the end of the show, don't we? <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we, we skip the after party. So. We're, we're going to the after party <laughs> now okay. since we kind of already <laughs> did. So please watch us on uh, uh, listen. Watch us on YouTube. Please like, share, subscribe. I'm trying to do the Christian thing, and I'm already okay. flailing Hold a little thing. bit. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> Our, go ahead and uh, right now subscribe on a YouTube channel at uh, YouTube.com, The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. <laughs> And all you ladies, join up and welcome aboard on you. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com, The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Over 71,000 of you, and there will be more coming. But if you want to listen to our audio stuff because you can't stand our faces, join us. <laughs> iHeartRadio, Sci-Fi.Radio, Odyssey, Spotify, Speaker, whatever. <laughs> Wherever you listen to your favorite, what the heck am I doing? <laughs> Podbean player. TikTok at the traveling TARDIS for some odd reason. You're missing the fact that you can say TARDIS. 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 I mean, sir, come on. I say right TARDIS there. out there. Well, if you want to, we're probably going to be playing. I'm breaking uh, every damn thing. Worlds apart, and we are looking to possibly on Twitch channel. Uh, as we move along, we might be asking people to play with us uh, live to see how we do. And we can take on your favorite uh, traveling TARDIS panelists. So thank you, Andrew, for yeah. the link to the, uh, the Subwave. There you go. Subwave Network. The Subwave mm -hmm. Network. Okay. It's kind of the out there. So everybody's talking about the Curse of the Black Swans. <laughs> End the show so we could keep going. 
Oh, then, all right. I put my you push the button. Darn, I put my the button. I've been going to the after party for what, 10 minutes? The after Bye. party. After party. The show or I'll pop you with my dollar twenty-five gun. <gasps> it's a blunderbuss. It's a blunderbuss. Wow. That actually clicks. I like it. Yeah. I actually think it was just going to be a prop. Huh. So I honestly, if I can, I, if, mm, I really want to own a blunderbuss. I really, my husband's actually looking at a kit that I could yeah, make that. that's a blunderbuss, and I want that. I love the fact that uh, Swan had a spyglass too and never said that he had it. That was fun. Spoilers, the map the inside. There's no map in there. There's bar. no map in there. Well, it's a bunch of oh, Wait, no, that's back. not it either. I went to the dollar store running to see if I had asked. It's like, I don't have anything piratey in the house, really? Did uh, Candyman get the message that the Winter King will be available in the UK on ITVX by the end of this year? Uh, cool. I've got, I've got ITVX, so uh, if it comes on, I'll be looking out that for it. Cheers, Roger. I'm making sure I watch that and let you know what I think. So he did not know you told him, Roger. That's awesome. Roger, Roger. Isn't today, couldn't you have sure. gone to Krispy Kreme and get a free donut? I mean, it used to be. Dress up like um, a pirate and they give you a free donut. Arr. Okay. Here's I'm already dressed. Where can I go to get some free swag? <laughs> okay. I Here's, go. A question. Here's a question to my American friends. Which is better, Krispy Kreme or Dunkin' uh, Donuts? Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Krispy Kreme. Yeah. You can get a Dunkin' Donut type style cake anywhere, but Krispy Kreme or They all just Jiggly like the siren confection. song of that hot now neon yes. signage. Mm -hmm. In the UK, Krispy Kremes are like premium donuts, but when you try them, they're not that great. Not the same. It's all right, get them off my screen. <laughs> <laughs> I like Dunkin'. I'm a dunk I'm more of a Dunkin' Donuts person. I like the variety of Dunkin', but Krispy Kreme has actual crack in its, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is very, a glazed yeast donut is very, very addicting. I stay away from that. It is. Mm. Although oh, there's much. Remember the good old days? Hmm? I was about to say, remember the good old days when some products were just like one product, like Krispy Kreme? They still have them. They have their own stores, but it was just the one donut. Like, uh, do you remember Polar Bear? I remember Polar Cup. A Polar Cup. Polar Cup. Ah! Polar Cup. Um, and What's I remember Polar Cup, Polar Polar Cup was a frozen crushed shaved ice. Shaved ice. Oh, like Slurpees. Yeah, but this one was, they actually had, in place of the ice cream trucks, they had Polar Cup trucks come into your neighborhood. Oh, and that's wow. all they sold was Polar Cup. And at some point, they were doing so well, they actually had businesses. It's like a Polar lemon Cup. ice. But that's all they offered. Or lemon lime ice. Made. That, that was, was it, it, but it was a shaved ice. So yeah. it was like a, a snow cone. So yeah. it was literally just the, sh the shaved ice. It had that lemon lime kind of flavor. They scooped it, packed it into just a like a styrofoam cup, yep. and then stuck one of the kind of like straws or a spoon that had like the, the, the straw yeah. spoon where it was kind of a straw, half of a spoon, like a Slurpee. That was a polar cup. I didn't have the trucks. We actually had a tiny polar cup stand where oh, it was – this in the middle of the shopping center it was maybe the size of two parking spots it was like this mm -hmm. little boxing yeah. stand that you could just drive right up and order polar cup maybe one or two people could have fit in the thing to work it and that was it no they uh, had a yeah whole... in, in, the, in the uk they call slush puppies i think andy mentioned yes, that as well they, we've had slush puppies like that it's very it's very similar but this was really packed ice it does right. sound it yeah yeah, yeah. Slush puppet. So my favorite such puppies, red and blue, mixed together with a little bit of um, Russian water on top of it. You get what I mean? I think I remember <laughs> the, the logo. It was a long-eared dog. Wearing yeah. a sweater. And a... Yeah. yeah, with the That's beanie it. cap. Because he was cold. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yeah. Yep. yeah. Beanie Color. cap. With a... I don't know if you know my area of town, uh, Melanie, but right at... And you, you should know, Tom, the area. It's cold. I think it's where... Uh, Conroy, Conroy, and or Conway and Curry Ford crossover, and right there was a Polar Cup. It was yes. uh, an established business. It's now uh, Papa John's. It's been Papa John's ever since they took out that place. But I just saw for the longest time. I was like, wow, how did they even do business? They only had the one item. It's not like they had <laughs> Polar Cup and 
tea or, or polished water. Okay. It was just like one item. That was it. Or you can get the large, small, or medium. Just like you're not going to sell anything else, right? So or polished water. Watermark. So many things in that area. I remember Handy City. I remember Woolco. Uh, that's one sub place I can't remember anymore. I tried to compete with Subway and they flopped. And of course, Subway's up to Sobix, I think. Wasn't it Sobix? Oh, another one. But there's uh, uh, Blimpy. Uh, Blimpy Subs. Blimpy. I remember that was in the Winter Park, across from Winter Park Mall, next to the movie theater. You used to go in there for Blimpy Subs. That was a big thing. But now I was like, well, all you have left is Subway, and that's now a corporate thing. I remember oh, before the days of Home Depot, there was Builder Square and Builder Square 2. And Tim Allen, yeah. was the heck? Oh, I see your Builder Square, and I raise you a Scotty's. Oh, God. I, I raise you a Scotty's. Scotty's. I'll I go Handy City Scotty's. and then Scotty's. Scotty's had it all figured out. Builders I still have a tape there. measure that says Scotty's on it oh, with the logo, wow. little, little, yeah, little cartoon Scotsman head. Yes, well, still have Hobo's fast food stateside. Anybody want to jump on that? I'm not know. familiar with Hobo's. That's the only bad thing stateside is there's a lot. It, we're regional on it, on top of it, so it could be Midwest, it could be Southeast. Florida is its own freaking <laughs> no man's land. And you got West, West of the Mississippi, East of the Mississippi, North, East. South, yeah. Well, when I was down in March and I took Christian and Arthur to Seminole Town, Plaza, Seminole Town Square, yep. I was expecting to go to A&W Root Beer. Oh, I, said, I got my coupon. No, and then like, many. it's gone. Yeah, they're mostly gone. The they're last one was to North, 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 North. Uh, A&W Root Beer is really popular in the UK. Oh. So take the well, coupon. The in, we had a fast food, for here, fast food, A&W, well, uh, the root beer itself or the fast food joint? The root beer. Okay. Because the root beer company, there it is, they had, they, they, they were, for me, it was a mall staple. Uh, then I saw yeah. a couple other stores that were AW, but most of them were burgers and hot, more hot dogs and corn totally. dogs forward than anything. Well, my, so my, town where, my town where I live in, got, we've got the first ever UK's Wendy's drive through. Wow. About time. When, now, when, when do you now. guys get rid of disco? <laughs> <laughs> well, we had Wendy's back in the nineties. I remember having Wendy's, but it was only one shop, and it didn't last. And the Wendy's pulled out of the UK. I think it was about ninety six, and yeah. they're just bringing it back back into the UK now. Um, there's one in Camden, and they just opened the first drive through in in basically in Essex where I live. Because I know there's a lot of you, there's other YouTube channels that'll compare the fast foods of the size, at least for the meals that are the, if it, if there's a branch in the UK or if there's a branch in the United States and what the sizes yeah. look inside, like and all that. Inside, insider food or something like that. Yeah, I think so. I think Insider does it. So I yeah. watch a lot of the Insider foods and the, the Business Insider YouTube channel. Well, you were shocked when you came over to London when you went to the American shops. <laughs> and you, and found stuff in and you found stuff that you couldn't get back in Florida. It's like, I what? It. I bought those grape airheads. I was so happy. I was like, I have to just buy them. I know I could find them, but th those I couldn't. Yeah, no. There was a moon pie. Wasn't there? I think there was a moon pie that I was thinking about getting. That I yeah. couldn't find. Uh, wait a minute. Okay. We, we, have, we have to talk about this debate. <laughs> you guys, and put it in the chats right now. Yes, thumbs up for yes for candy corn or thumbs down. <laughs> Melanie, what, 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 oh my God, here we go. <laughs> oh, they, you, you just up the candy corn debate thing there. Because <laughs> I just ate through all my pumpkins. So I they, like candy corn. So, okay, so Melanie gives a thumbs up, and I'm assuming um, everybody gives a thumbs up to candy corn. I love candy corn. My manager gave it to me, even though I, I, we both like candy corn. It's just, it was expecting Jelly Belly to have the original gourmet jelly bean candy corn flavors that you're not gonna make a jelly bean out of this thing just stick it with the candy no. corn yeah. I, I, they I, can I, make a, there's there's a, a weird looking candy corn out there brax is making it and if you look at the bag it's all multicolors. but actually every candy corn tastes different which is hmm. obscene because usually that is always the same kind of a little sugar mallow cream but one's like cotton candy one's caramel oh. apple one's <laughs> a funnel cake it's all there so thumbs down look at all these he is hello sarah Oh, I can't wait for y'all. I can't wait for all y'all coming in here on Easter trying to hurt me and peeps, but mm -mm. 
Great mm. debate. I, I got to say yeah. this. If you hate candy corn, look up on YouTube, uh, Lewis Black Candy Corn. He gives a great description of candy corn and the history thereof. Mm -hmm. Not the real history, his history of candy corn. <laughs> But it is such a yeah exactly. And you know, and if you take candy corn, I wish I had some. And that you'd put them, you put them down so they're all like the pieces, the the the, the little corners, face each other like a little pizza pie. Mm -hmm. That's supposed to look like the corner. That's supposed to emulate the cob. Mm -hmm. That's what it looks like on the candy corn. That's why the edge of the candy corn is corn colored, like yellow, and the inside's supposed to emulate the cob. So if you just kept stacking and stacking them up, you know, in a, in, a, in a circle and kept stacking, you would have a corn of uh, so are you up. telling me that you're trying to explain that people Shit. eat candy corn are then eating vegetables you can oh you can <laughs> <laughs> i have oh, a photo wish. Wish. oh i can't wait to find you this photo wish. with my phone i have a i have a photo of uh me being my sister hates candy corn hates it and i was like during the entire month of october putting candy corn on everything i had it on my broccoli i had it on my chicken i had sprinkles just just a few kernels just to take pictures of it and send her my dinner and i'm like here we go nobody thought i was gonna get that's right andrew one of your five a day candy corn, <laughs> five a day. Candy yep. corn solves it down there well they used to call it hen's teeth but it didn't sell so well yeah <sighs> Doesn't sound so tasty. Yes. Oh, I think I recall uh, that. Okay, uh, and Lewis Black says in his joke, and it is honest. Did anybody take the candy corn, put it on their teeth, and make Dracula? Of course. <laughs> of course. Okay, I'm not the only one. Okay. And then you put it on the bottom, and you look like a little, you know, an orc. <laughs> the worst one is the worst one is when you accidentally like get the chocolate candy corn, the Indian candy corn. Mm. Yes, the autumn. And then and then you try to do that, doesn't go down well. When you stick it in your teeth uh, and smile at right. someone, you just got brown stuff in your mouth. Yeah, no, mm. just, just, just not good. Just look like a redneck. Roger, on point. a side note, I'm glad you mentioned Las Vegas because I heard a rumor over on Clownfish TV. My friends who uh, um, put out some of my articles out there, um, they are doing so. Universal is supposed to be doing something that's going to be Halloween Horror Nights all year round. Yes, uh, it's going to be go back all year round in Vegas. I don't. I mean, they're still building the uh, the Universal <coughs> Park out here, the third park. Sorry, guys. You're dying, fine. Mark. I'm scared. I, can't leave I, I bought yeah, a brutalities now. called brutalities keys called Children of the Corn uh, milk bottles <laughs> or coal bottles. What's a coals? Cola. Cola bottles. Milk yeah. bottles I, don't know what milk, bottles. I don't know what milk, milk bottles, bottles are. Milk bottles are like little tiny bottles which are white and they like taste like milk. That's what we call milk bottles. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I've not had this. I've had cola bottles, and even then, I will go up and down the line of which ones are great, and I don't care. Haribo, the Haribo, Haribo ones are Haribo. way too hard. Yeah. Yeah. It should be gummy no, and not. Nice, um, it's eat them the milk bottles are not really that gummy. It's more less gummy than the than the cola bottles. Okay. It's hard to explain. Nick, could you explain it? Because it's like back from. Do you remember the milk bottles when we were kids? Yeah, yeah. They don't. I'm thinking that milk bottles don't really taste like milk. They taste like <laughs> sugar, <laughs> maybe a bit milk chocolatey, and then the cola bottles don't taste like cola either. No, it's everything's dry, artificial. Dry. Yeah, very artificial, which is part of the fun, right? Something yeah. different. Really? Really? I, <laughs> <that's not> <laughs> I always get snookered by Haribo. I will is, buy Haribo so mm. many things, and I just, I'm yes. not a huge fan of their flavor. Like, they're, Albanese is my favorite gummy bear because you have all the different fun flavors in it. It's, it's just the texture thing. I love, I love sure, but, flavor. No, yes. you. <laughs> No, I would. Mm -hmm. So, was anyone who wants to get Melanie a present for Christmas, <laughs> just get him and share that, okay? <laughs> Turkish Delight. Uh, oh, the Turkish Delight, the rose flavored chocolate covered soap that you get that you gave me. That was delightful. I warned you, oh, I hated it. That was terrible. You, you I'm never going to send you a moon pie now. 
you eat the chocolate off of that and then you take a shower with it. Yeah, <laughs> it was the no, no those that's sherbet. essentially it. The sherbet lollipops were ugh. ooh, no, no me gusta. Stick with my circus peanuts. Sherbert. Oh my god. I, I like circus even... peanuts. Yeah. But in oh, moderation. Like I literally need to have one be like, oh a circus peanut. I eat the one, one and I'm done. Like... Yeah. What, was, what was those peanuts you gave me? Those Boston baked bean peanuts. Those are Boston baked beans. They were rank. <laughs> That's it, a little peanut in a, a candy coated hard shell. That's cheap candy. They were <laughs> rank with a cup capital W R whatever you want to put everything in the world. <laughs> and I were, I I give you no, <laughs> no on Turkish to like. Oh my uh, goodness, you people are animals. Nico, no, <laughs> why? Because she bathes with it. After she eats the chocolate, she takes a shower. <laughs> ah, that's All right, let's go ahead and wrap up this puppy. Thank you so much for joining us tonight at the Legend of the Traveling Tartars. We hope you get the chance. Only four bucks if you want to go on Big Finish and download the, the uh, um, In the UK, so. it's it is. Definitely. It's worth a listen. Right. I'm like, I'm going to have to listen to this again four because there are hours, high yeah. notes and there are kind of notes where I'm like, maybe it was better. In the UK, it's two pound ninety nine directly from Big Finish. Download only. Ooh. Well, it translates That's to four bucks to us. <laughs> yeah, it's well, a two-hour yeah. audio, and it's <laughs> it's else? packed. So, I mean, there are parts where I was giggling out loud. I mean, it's it's a fun ride. I just wish I was prepared for it. And now that I'm prepared for it, I'm like, I'm gonna listen. Yeah. People, whatever makes people happy, Roger. <laughs> whatever floats your boat for, 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 what, for a long time two guys were playing with tigers out there that was dangerous acts I'm like okay whatever whatever makes people happy we'll let this be the last of the chats and then we'll say goodbye did anybody else in the UK have ice cream from an ice cream van that had a dog shaped plastic cone no but you're giving me ideas this week <laughs> <laughs> no but us but us, but us Americans yeah. had ones that were the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles that had eyeballs like like this sliding off Spongebob Yes, Andrew, I love Snoopy. Like make sure on the way out, make sure to subscribe youtube.com, The Legend of the Traveling Tardis. Thank you so much for getting us to 3,300 and climbing rapidly, uh, getting us over to 71,000. Good God, guys, move over to YouTube, uh, Facebook.com, The Traveling Tardis. And we're still growing, of course. If you want to listen to our audios, iHeart, Sci Fi, Dot Radio, you can download the app for free, Odyssey, yeah. Spotify, Spreaker, wherever you listen to it. We are on TikTok. Um, and I believe in the coming months, we'll let you know. We're still scheduling because we do have guests. Um, we're still speaking with Phantasmagoria to see when they're performing because I know they're booking up the calendar. So uh, the uh, uh, John will be contacting me very shortly. Lord, Lord Byron will be contacting me shortly to get all that taken care of, plus some more adventures of Dalek Hal. And if you haven't seen his adventures, you can go on YouTube. Uh, here's just one of his many adventures. So in the goodness that we have with Dalek Hal. Um, I was literally talking about that game the other day to my husband and how sometimes you, when you're playing a game for so long, you mm -hmm. fantasy and reality kind of blend together. So at mm -hmm. one point, me and my husband are walking the other day. Sorry, this is going to be quick. I promise. Uh, he was going through, we were going past Lowe's. We're watching all these people loading up mulch and stuff. He goes, oh, that's smart because it is the first day of spring. And I just looked over at him because we're playing Stardew Valley. And I looked at him like, you know what? I can't, I can't hate on that because when I was playing GTA, there's times where I was in the real damn world driving around going, Oh, I need one of those cars. And then realizing Melon, you can't go carjack that. I, I remember in vice. Killed. I remember in vice city. I accidentally, you know, when you get bored, I started a war with the cops and I was just starting out. I'm, I think I was like within a couple weeks and I accidentally got the tank ran off with the tank to my safe spot, saved it, and I got a tank. So when I went to the racing games, <laughs> you just so I just blew up the other cars and raced it. I was like, done. I was just like, this is how silly it is. But just, now, kids, now, kids, do not go out carjacking no, or, go out, <laughs> or go out with a tank or just play the video <laughs> game if you can. and blow up other cars. Totally. Yeah, exactly. There. Go play Candy Crush or something like that. What Speaking of which, that? Here's just one more uh, for the road, just to show you some silliness that we're doing with Dalek.
<laughs> That's the way it should have ended. That's all I'm saying there. Everybody, we're going to go ahead and say goodbye. Thank you so much again. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, please take care of yourselves Yarr. again. We should have Phantasmagoria. We'll give you all the dates and times when we are aware when they're doing it. Also, we're going to do our foodie special. And coming back is uh, Billy Floyd from The Kitchen Killers. And he will be with us. And we're going to be doing it different. We're going to be doing it sometime in the next couple of weeks in October for Canadian Thanksgiving. We're going to be doing our foodie special there. So lift up the drinks in your rum. Mine's gone. Cheers to everybody and have a great time. Yeah. Please stay. <laughs> yeah. Please During stay responsibility. Stay. Oh, I don't know about that, but okay. Don't <laughs> while you're while you're about to leave, go ahead and uh, thank you for watching again. Like, share, subscribe. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> that was tough. Yes, that's how we're gonna end this show. <laughs> don't forget to say goodbye on the way out. Scallywags. You scallywags. Thank you. <laughs> Tony, take us out quick.